Hi guys, we have some really exciting news to cover. So we're going to be covering the Joe Biden and Trump debate. So without further ado, we're just going to dig right into it because it does not need any introduction whatsoever. Um, Joe Biden says, let's get ready to rumble. Biden proposes two debates and Trump accepts the, de the debate. Because of the fact that a few weeks ago or even a few months ago at this point, Trump said anywhere, any place, any time, I will debate you. Just tell me when. And then Joe Biden said, well, since you said any place, anywhere, I'm going to be, um, I'll be accepting that. And then he posted this video on Twitter. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. He's attacking Trump saying, oh, well, you never signed up for a single debate since you debated me. Um, Joe Biden, you haven't either. Like, are you going to debate RFK Jr.? No, you're not, because that just does not make any sense for you politically, because you're going to go and make a political um, suicide if you were to um, debate RFK Jr., because he's going to obliviate you, uh, first of all. Second of all, what are you talking about? Trump is free on Wednesdays. Why? Because that's um that's when court's not in session. It's just stupid. 14-second video, which featured several cuts, and Biden only talked about 51 words in this video. It's 14 seconds. I can talk for a long time without needing several cuts like that. And I'm not going to sit here and cut in the middle of my sentences unless I'm making like a TikTok or like a short. Because if my sentences are a little bit more exaggerated or if my sentences are a little bit more on the taking my time to actually explain, then it's not going to fit inside of the TikTok or the YouTube short or the Instagram reel. So what I would have to do is I would have to, I would have to cut it in between where I'm thinking about the sentence and where I would have a normal conversation with somebody would not go great on TikTok or Instagram reels and stuff like that because it's more fast paced. That's the only reason. But on Twitter, you can post a two hour, maybe even four hour video right now. So you can post all of that um, to Twitter and, and it's not going to be anything bad at all. Um, moving with this article from the Daily Wire, we have... At around the same time, Biden campaign sent a letter to the Commission of Presidential Debates announcing he will not participate in the nonpartisan group's debate plan set to begin in mid-September. Instead, Team Biden proposed late June and early September for presidential dates and late Ju July for our vice presidential debate. Biden campaign chair General, General Malley Dillon wrote that the commission's schedule is problematic because it would have debates come that come after early voting begins. Now, that's not the reason. It's because of the fact that um, Joe Biden wants people to forget about it come November, and he wants it to be done ASAP so he can actually get this away from him. He can get this option away from him as fast as he possibly can. Um, proposed um, parameters included a broadcast organization that held a... Two 2016 GOP primary debate and a 2020 primary debate as a host as well as a venue that is a television show that will only have the candidates and the moderators present. Yes, because of the fact that Joe Biden does not want anybody in the crowd cheering or um, booing or laughing at him. He does not want that. So he's just going to have the moderators there. And he's going to have the camera crew there. Um, Biden campaign also pushed for a one on one format achieving the possibility for an independent candidate RFK Jr. being thrown in the mix, and firm time limits for answers as well as turning off the candidate's microphone when it's not the person's time to speak, which is just stupid, by the way, because that's not even a debate. That's not even a conversation at all. So yes, we should have rules in some debates, but then at the same exact time, we need to actually have a debate. A debate is that you talk and then the other person talks, and if you lie while you're talking, then you get cut off. It's the point of a conversation. And, you know, these debates, the way that they do it, it's too much structure where you only have like a 30, maybe 40 second little clip time that you have to talk. That's it. So if you if you already memorized what you should say, when you should say it, then it doesn't really give much of what your abilities are to get the job done, which in this case, it doesn't really matter because both people have been president in the past. So we don't really need their answers, but let's just say in the primary debate where you would need to see somebody's answers to actually see how they would get the job done, 
um, the 30 to 40 seconds really do matter when it comes to those aspects. Um, but I just quite, I quite frankly find it a little bit annoying when we do have the memorized speeches that you're supposed to give a 30 second segment of what they believe in, a minute segment of what they believe in, but they would never be able to go on like a Joe Rogan show and, um, and you know, um, be in that conversation for like three, four hours at a time. They would never be able to do that. Um, Biden's campaign also pushed for, okay, I already read that, Trump, ha who has been urging Biden to agree to debate for months, announced on social media that he will accept the proposed debates. However, he did not comment on the debate rules that the, the Biden team suggested to be part of the process. Crooked Joe Biden is the worst debater I have ever faced. He can't put two sentences together. Crooked is also the worst. Crooked is also the worst president in history of the United States by far. Trump said to his post on the Truth, Truth Social platform, "It's time for a debate so that he can explain to the American people his highly destructive open border policy and his new ridiculous EV mandates, the allowance of crushing inflation, high taxes." and his really weak foreign policy, which is allowing the world to catch on fire, Trump added. I am ready to, and willing to debate Crooked Joe at the two proposed times in June and September. He continued, I would strongly recommend more than two debates and, for excitement purposes, a very large venue, although Biden is supposedly afraid of crowds. That's only because he doesn't get them. Just tell me when I'll be there. Let's get Randy to rumble. I completely agree. Um, yeah, Joe Biden does not get any crowds whatsoever. He does not attract any people. He does not attract any excitement. Um, even now, when he does get a crowd, it's just a few people, maybe a few hundred people. Trump has a, almost 100,000 people. Yeah, it, the distinction is just right on the nose. Um, Biden's campaign did not immediately respond to a counter offer. However, both Trump and Biden have since accepted an invitation from CNN to participate on June 27th in Georgia without an audience. And the second debate hosted by ABC News is set for September 10th. I would like to see who the moderator is. I would like to see who will be fact checking on these major networks that we have in America. And I would like to see how this actually takes place because we will be reacting to this live. I'm going to, um... Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be reacting to this live. We're going to be live streaming here on YouTube, and we're going to also be live streaming on X if you do want to follow me on those two platforms. June 27th, I will make more announcements as the time comes, but we do have another, um, you know, a perspective here. And these perspectives, these uh, people that have these perspectives are not really good. Their IQ is like, maybe five if you rub all of them together and then you excite some of them and then you try to ignite some more it, it, these people on the view that's what we're going to be talking about these people on the view have the worst iq cells that i've ever saw in my life uh, or not iq cells yeah maybe the iq cells but i would say like the brain cells the function that the brain actually has to actually think coherently or make coherent thoughts is completely erased in all of the views um heads over here so the co-host of the abc's the view attempted to handicap the upcoming debates between incumbent democrat president joe biden and his rival former president donald trump and managed to miss the mark on the most of their analyses the co-host spent a segment of wednesday's broadcast reacting to news that biden in a 14 second video that required five jump cuts and the phrase make my day has challenged Trump to a debate ahead of the 2024 presidential election in November. Luffy Goldberg um, began with the explanation of a few of the demands Biden has made from friendly outlets and moderators to a mon mandatory mic cutoff once time expired and said that she appreciated the char changes because she thought the new rules would keep Trump in line. Okay, but Joe Biden needs to be kept in line too because of the fact that last time i mean this is the point of a debate i just don't get this the debate of the point of a debate is to talk so for somebody to say just shut up already is just quite stupid in my opinion because this is the debate we're having a conversational debate with each other so for you to have complete nonsense act very sleepy not act on your 
like toes over here, not agile whatsoever. And then Trump just talks right over you, stumbles right over you because of the fact that Trump is actually a power move. Um, and then you tell Trump to shut up. That's not a good thing. That's not a dub on your part whatsoever. Um, Whoopi Goldberg began with the explanation for a few of the demands Biden made. Um, she cl then claimed that the moderators has allowed Trump to walk around behind behind former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton during a debate and stalk her. What? Instead of telling him that he remained behind the podium. What are you even talking about? Okay, so in the 2016, both of the debates, I watched both of them at that time. Um, what are you even talking about? Joe Biden, I mean... Trump and Hillary Clinton were walking around the stage. They were not staying in one place. So what are you even talking about? It just, Whoopi Goldberg just makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. This is just still so stupid. Here's the um. No, oh, here's the clip here. Here's, here's oh, what I here's what I really appreciate. Biden is saying no audience. Yeah, yep. good. And that the mics must be cut once. I love this. The the, the time to answer the question has expired. Yes. <laughs> and I I, I kind of I think it's fair, and I I, I don't I I think it's at CNN. I'm. It is CNN. So it's CNN. CNN. Yeah. And I'm hoping, because the last time, and I don't know if it was CNN that was moderating it, but when they allowed, when the moderators allowed him to go behind Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And, yeah. And, st and stalk her, yeah. and they didn't say, hey. Get back to the podium. Yeah. Get back to the podium. This is, you, people always say, what was it, what was the crowning thing? Where, because I always said he's he's gonna he's gonna win when he was running against yeah. Hillary. I always said it was never a doubt. I said, <laughs> okay, I highly doubt that. I highly, highly doubt, doubt that you said that Hillary Clinton was not gonna win. I highly doubt that. But I'm not gonna fact check you. Um, I'll just take your word for it. But the thing is, it's just stupid because obviously, when it comes to the aspect of Trump just walking around the stage because there is an audience, it's not stalking Hillary Clinton. That's just stupid. It's stupid on its face, and you know it. When I saw people recognize her getting stalked and didn't stop it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just stupid. It's just so stupid. That's not what happened whatsoever. I can't. There's no stalking that took place on the debate stage whatsoever. It's just, oh my God, it mind boggles me on why people think apparently that Trump was stalking Hillary Clinton by having a debate with her, walking around the stage. That's not stalking somebody. I need you, I need you to research what the definition of stalking is and you will see that that is not even close to the definition of stalking whatsoever. Co-host Alicia Farrow Griffin weighed in next, saying that it was smart of Biden to get ahead of this by challenging Trump to debate him. However, Biden's challenge came behind multiple calls from Trump for a pair to debate. Trump called on his likely opponent to debate him next February again after both he and Biden had each swept their respective Super Tuesday races and once again in late April. So, yeah, there's several times that Trump called Joe Biden to a debate. Um, and then The View just has these stupid opinions. It's not even stupid opinions. It's just stupid takes. Every single one of their takes are just so mind boggly, um, you know, stupid. And it's not even just the fact that uh, it's not even just the fact that they're just stupid. It's just incoherent. It just doesn't make any sense. Their opinions on this matter make absolutely no sense whatsoever. So I just don't understand why anybody would even think that Trump is stalking Joe Biden and uh, stalking Hillary Clinton just by walking around the debate stage. It it's beyond me. It really is. It it really is beyond me.
With that being said, we do have another article to cover from the Daily Wire. Article from a Daily Wire, we have a ship that caused Baltimore Bridge collapse had two electrical blackouts day before de deadly collision, federal investigators say. The container ship that rammed into a support beam for Francis Scott Key Bridge, which caused the Baltimore Bridge to collapse in March, suffered a pair of electrical out blackouts the day before the collision that resulted in deaths of six construction workers, according to the federal investigators. Now, this is just stupid because of the fact that federal investigators could find this out after the fact but they can't find this out before the fact like what kind of testing do these ships go through it just doesn't make much sense here all the ships should go through some sort of testing before they go on the mission before they go and set sail and then if there's something found malfunctionist about the ship then you can't use the ship it should be the exact same thing on airlines they should have safety checks that they do prior to taking off, just like the ships. It's very important that these ships don't have electrical outlets. And, you know, that is on the um, the captain, too, because of the captain. The captain called the Mayday call, but, but because of the fact that this happened the day prior, the company itself knew about this because the electrical blackouts happened twice the day prior. So what makes you think that the situation is going to get better without you fixing the problem at hand? It doesn't make much sense here. Moving on to another article, we have something related to this, but this just happened now. Barge runs into and damages bridge in South Texas. Now, what's going on with these barges and these, and these ships? Because people are just stupid. All of these people that are driving the ships, the captains of the ships are just stupid. I don't know what they're going through. I don't know if they need more coffee. I have some coffee for you. Just drink some coffee as long as you don't knock down a bridge here. We need these bridges. Okay, these bridges are highways that we use to get through and across. Let's knock this bridge down. No, we need these bridges. You go around the bridge, go the long way, for Christ's sake. We don't really care. If, you, if it takes you uh, 10 more days to get to your location, get to your location. If you cannot be trusted by going underneath the bridge, then you lost your damn privileges. A fuel barge slammed into a bridge in southern Texas on Wednesday, causing damage to the structure and oil to spill up, spill into the surrounding waters. Oh no, the environmentalists are going to be so upset. The accident in Gre Grevelston which is just south of Houston on the Gulf of Mexico, it happened when the barge ran into the Pelican Island Cruiseway Bridge that connects the town to Pelican Island. The Associated Press reported that the bridge was stuck around 10 p.m. local time when a tugboat backing out of Texas International Terminals, a fuel storage operator next to the bridge, lost control of two barges it was pushing. There was no indication that anyone has been harmed in the incident, thank God, even though one person reportedly fell off the barge during the accident. Oh my God, that's crazy. Imagine falling off. Okay, thank God this person is okay. Thank God nobody was harmed during this, but still, what what's going on here? How do you lose control of a barge? What? It's just like, oops, I accidentally let it go, and then it, oh, I, it looks like it's actually going into the, br oh, man, it just crashed into the bridge. How does this even happen? Like, is this, is this um, neglectful on the employee's fault? Is this, um, deli is this, um, I just, I'm not understanding here. How about you be more careful with your work? It's so common sense. And we have a video of this event taking place right here. So we can see the barge that clap that went right into the bridge over here. Thank God the bridge is still okay. Um, and it's still standing. And this is exactly what should happen with bridges is if you collapse into one of its support beams, it shouldn't all just fall right down. Yeah, it's just crazy. That person that's um, driving this uh, truck on the top here, they're really... Yeah, they really um don't really care at all because I would not be doing that. I would be staying away from this bridge. I would be turning my butt around and getting right off that bridge ASAP. So yeah, no. And there's some people that are just scared of going across bridges now. And anytime there's like a ship underneath because they're afraid of it being like a, des a final destination type thing. And so many people, I saw a video of them just going and pulling over on the bridge or as they were going on the bridge, as the bridge, as the... um ship was sailing underneath the bridge um but most of the time these bridges have such high support beams that it does take a lot like that sh container ship is a lot like a huge boat that's why it crashed into the bridge and it collapsed the bridge 
But if it was like a small bridge, that would have never even happened. So talking about things that just don't make any sense, we have King Charles mocked on social media and it looks like he's going straight to hell. So I'm going to explain this thing. So um, this is a Daily Wire article here. We have a portrait being made of King Charles, right? And um, the King Charles in the picture, there's a butterfly on his um, on his shoulder over here. He's he has like his hands in like um, like at this position here. I'm gonna show a picture of it right here. Um, we have all of the badges that he earned throughout all of the years, but it looks so weird. Like his head is peeking out, his hands are peeking out, but it's like he's gonna go back into the frame, and that's like a portal to hell. That's what people are saying. So yeah, it just looks very weird. And this is the um, this is the first official painted portrait of King Charles III since the coronation has been revealed at Buckington Palace. So this is the video right here. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, like somebody said, does anybody else feel like this is off-putting? Yeah, it definitely is off-putting. Definitely is off-putting. It looks, re it really does look like a portal to hell. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. Some people are saying that it is a good idea. Some people are saying that it is a good portrait and stuff like that. I don't care. How about we just make a normal por portrait? What's wrong with normalcy? What's wrong with just having a normal portrait? Why does he need to be surrounded by like a fire? just doesn't make any sense here as long as he likes it I guess but still my cup of tea is not that my cup of tea is actually a cup of coffee so it's not that whatsoever but with that being said thank you all for watching thank you all for listening and I hope they have a great rest of your day if you did like this episode and you do want to see more I do post new episodes of my show every single Monday Wednesday and Friday thank you all for watching thank you all for listening and I hope they have a great rest of your day bye